Welcome to How to Use a Wacom Tablet, Part 2. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us on Twitter at Flurn. Today we got something really cool. We're going to be showing you guys how to use your Wacom tablet in Photoshop. In part one we showed you guys how to set up your tablet and now we're going to go and actually show you what all those settings do in Photoshop. So this is how I use my tablet in Photoshop. If you use your tablet in a different way, totally cool. But this is how I do it and it's worked for me and uh, I, I really, really love it. So let's go ahead. Jumping into Photoshop, we're going to see that let's, if I just use a mouse and I've got a trackpad on this little laptop here, um, just grabbing the brush tool and using a regular brush, as I click and kind of like drag around, that's pretty much about the extent of what I'm going to be able to do with the brush here in Photoshop if I'm not using the tablet. It's just, it's crude, it's just kind of like an off and on kind of thing. That's as best as we're going to get. So that's why we use this tablet. Now, keep in mind, I'm using the brush tool here, guys, but if you guys have been watching Flurn, you know how much we use layer masks and adjustment layers, things like that. A lot of what you're gonna be doing in Photoshop is gonna be based around using the brush tool or some variation of it. Maybe you're painting off or on on a layer mask. Maybe you're using a clone stamp tool, things like that. So if you're thinking to yourself, I don't even use the brush tool that much, you actually probably use it a lot more than you think. Just about any time you're clicking in Photoshop, the tablet is going to be much much better. So this is about all we got from our um, from our little trackpad here. Now we're going to switch to our regular brush and uh, let's just go ahead and see what we have. So you remember I said these buttons here, the forward button is set to the right click and the back button is now set to undo. So I'm going to click on this forward button and we can see this is basically the same as right click. These are a lot of the brushes here that Photoshop has to offer. If you guys don't have this many or you have many more. You can create your own brushes. You can do all kinds of really cool things. I'm going to show you how to add a couple of the brushes. So after hitting right click, we're just going to click on this gear right here. And then I'm going to go down to M brushes. I don't even know what that is. I don't use those, but whatever. M brushes. And <laughs> I'm going to click on append. And basically this is just going to stick those M brushes at the end of our list. So we're going to click down here. I'm going to see what these M brushes do. So I'm going to click on that guy and kind of paint around and as I press harder and softer you can see it doesn't it's not doing a whole lot here so let's go ahead and go into I'm gonna hit undo or this back button twice there we go and now we're gonna go into our brush menu and I'm gonna show you all kinds of really cool things you can do with your with your tablet here so we're gonna go up to window and then down here to brush and you can see right now we've got a pretty good preview of what this actually looks like. We've got scattering turned on, dual brush turned on, and it just pretty much looks like that. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and see, maybe I want this to be smaller as I start off and then larger as I like, you know, press a little bit harder. So I'm gonna click on the shape dynamics. There we go. And shape, shape dynamics, we're gonna turn where it says size jitter, I'm gonna turn the control here to pen pressure. And now we can see it's like an instant preview of what's going to be going on here. It's going to start off a little bit smaller, get a little bit larger, and then come off a little bit smaller again. So as I don't press hard, this is what it looks like. As I press harder, it's going to look like that. And then as I kind of let off, it's going to look like this again. And you can see what a big difference is. Again, that's it's not going to work if you're not using the pressure sensitive tablet because that variation is done with the pressure sensitivity. So let's just say I wanted to like, you know, draw my name. Now it actually looks like I used a piece of chalk or whatever to draw my name, whereas with like a, that says Aaron by the way, <laughs> with this, uh, not so much. I just, it's going to be absolutely pathetic. So this is, you know, using one of these types of brushes. Now let's just go ahead and choose like a regular soft round brush and I'll show you guys some other things that are just going to be a little bit more, um, there we go, they're just going to be a little bit more applicable to everything you do. We'll start off with all of these kind of off. So here's our brush and we're just going to paint around again. If everything is off here in your brush menu, it's going to look pretty similar to what you're doing with your mouse or with your uh, trackpad. It's pretty much the same. This is where your preview comes in. Now I'm going to click on shape dynamics here. Let's turn this on and we can certain turn our size jitter on as well. So we've got our size jitter. This doesn't have to be up anywhere, but really what you want to do is set your control to pen pressure. So as I don't press hard, it's going to be smaller. As I press harder, it's going to be a little bit larger. You can change your minimum diameter as well. So if I wanted to be able to start off, start off very small, get larger, and then small again, that's where the minimum diameter comes in. There we go. And we'll just make a brush that's a little bit smaller, larger, bring our minimum diameter down. So it's going to start off small, get very big, and then go to small again. Okay, things like angle jitter, you can turn these on for pen pressure as well. 
I don't use things like angle jitter a whole lot, but the pen pressure and the, uh, the size jitter set to pen pressure, I use all the time. All right, the next thing we can look at is things like scattering. We can turn scattering just any way we wanna do it. Right now, the control is gonna be off, so these little dots are just gonna scatter all around. Now, if you wanna set this again to pen pressure, if I don't press hard, we're not gonna be very scattered. The harder I press, the more my scattering is gonna happen, and then the softer again. So it can build on itself. You can build on the size of the actual little dots that you're making. There won't be little dots, they'll be together if you don't have scattering turned on and you can turn on whether they're gonna be like more transparent or less transparent. And that's gonna be here in transfer. So let's click on, we'll turn on, scat, turn scattering off for a second. So that's a nice brush. We're gonna click on this transfer and what we're gonna do is click on opacity jitter. We're gonna turn this to off because we don't need to control that. But here where we want the flow jitter, we're gonna turn the control of the flow jitter to pen pressure. So this is where all the really cool stuff happen. You have this pressure sensitive tablet, you might as well build in the pressure sensitivity to actually like affect what you're doing here. So as our flow jitter, basically as I don't press hard, we're not gonna be putting down a lot of ink and the harder I press, the more we're gonna put down. So we have a lot of control. Right now we've got, because of the shape dynamics, it's starting off small and starting off light. And as I press harder, it's gonna get larger and darker. Now let's say I don't want it to get start off small. I just wanna be able to like not put down a whole lot of ink if I don't press hard. And if I do press hard, it'll start to put down a whole lot. So you guys can imagine using like a layer mask or something like that, you've got a lot more control rather than just like clicking and kind of painting around. Not to mention you have the really nice freedom of actually using na natural brush strokes from your hand like you would be for drawing or something like that. So all these things kind of come together to give you a lot more control with everything you're doing in Photoshop. Now when you guys are actually using your Wacom tablet in Photoshop, there are a lot of really great buttons that come pre pro you can just like click these buttons and they're all actually programmable. So you can set up your different menus here and uh, you can have it be like this you could have set to undo. These are actually completely customizable. So any kind of keystroke, like if you can never remember the keystroke for what is undo or what is, you know, make a new layer mask or what is zoom in and out and things like that. You can actually set up your scroll wheel to where you can have this zoom in and out as you rotate it around. You can have this set up to undo. You could have this set up to be your brush tool. So all these are pre are completely programmable to do just about whatever you want. The scroll wheel is really, really nice. Personally, I tend to turn these things off. <laughs> I, know, I know I'm like, they're really nice. They really are for some people. These buttons on the side are really useful and I have a lot of friends who do actually program all these things for really, really cool macros. I personally don't use them. I turn them off for the most part. The reason is I'm pretty comfortable using the keyboard shortcuts. So I have this right over here next to my laptop. With my left hand, I'm using keyboard shortcuts and I keep this on my right hand. And that just keeps me from like going back and forth and back and forth. But if you're the type of person who likes to set up things like, oh, I want this one to be brush tool, this one to be zoom in and out, things like that, then these buttons are perfect for you. The last little thing you guys are gonna be using when you're in Photoshop is this guy. So this is your pen, it has a nice little holder and there's a little secret in here. It actually unscrews and you have a lot more of these little pen tips. Very, very cool invention. I love this Wacom, good job guys. Now, these different pen tips are made to simulate different types of mediums. So you have a couple tips here that they actually feel like felt. So if you enjoy the feeling of like drawing with a felt tip marker, these are gonna be perfect. They're gonna provide a little bit more resistance on your actual tablet. So it doesn't feel like it's going so smooth because sometimes when it's, you know, it's too smooth, you feel like your stroke is too fast. I don't know if you guys have done a lot of drawing, but it's like the difference between drawing with a pencil, it's kind of like rough and your strokes take a little bit longer, rather than drawing with a ballpoint pen, it just kind of slips away from you. So this is, would be your ballpoint pen type of equivalent here. It actually is a ballpoint, it, it has a ballpoint on it. So if you guys really like drawing with a ballpoint pen, it's gonna simulate that really well. And then there's a spring-loaded tip here as well. So I've also heard that all kinds of cool replacements. I've heard of a lot of people kind of like wearing through their tablets, like their little nibs here. They're like, I don't know, I've, I've used like five of them in a month. Um, you're probably pressing too hard. <laughs> it's just, I replace the nib on my tablet once a year, maybe. Um, and I, I do enjoy playing around with these different things. For the most part, I just keep it on these black smooth ones. But if you are finding that you're like pressing way, way too hard, go into your settings and adjust your pressure sensitivity so you don't have to press as hard to get the same result. But that's a really, really cool feature that stores right here in the actual holder for the pen itself. 
If you guys have been watching Flurn for a while, you know we started off using the Wacom, I think it was just the Intuos 3, then we upgraded to a 4, and now we're using a Pro, the Intuos Pro, which is the newest model. And the thing I really like about this, well, it just looks nice and sleek, but it has a wireless thing built into it. So this is this little USB key that actually stores in the side here. So there's a little door in there. You can kind of store it in there when you're not in use, which is very nice. Pull this open. You've got your little U wireless USB key. You just like plug this into the side of your computer, hit this power button on the side, and you're good to go. And in my experience, it, it connects really seamlessly and it, the charge stays good for a long time. If you do run a little bit low on the charge, there's a USB thing as well. So you can just plug a USB cable from your tablet into your computer and that's how you charge it. And if you don't wanna go wireless, you just plug the tablet into your computer with the cable and it's not wireless. But it actually does work really, really well. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. It's to show you how I use a Wacom tablet in Photoshop. And I mean this with 100% of my heart. If I didn't have a Wacom tablet, I don't think I would do Photoshop anymore. I really do mean that. It's 100% essential. If you guys have been watching Flurn, you can see all the way from episode number one, I've had a Wacom tablet right beside my computer. Every time I open up Photoshop, I've got a tablet. The just control and the pressure sensitivity and everything that it gives you is like completely unreplaceable. So if you guys are interested in the exact tablet that I use, this is a Wacom Intuos Pro small. We'll put a link up here so you guys can pick one up if you want to. If you're looking to save a little bit of money, there are lesser expensive versions that also work really, really well. And that's pretty much it, guys. So if you have any questions, please leave them in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you and uh, we'd love to know how your tablet use is going. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, and we'll flirt you later. Make sure to subscribe to our channel.